Welcome to Today Matters, our short devotional in the Word of God. We're going through the book of Colossians in about five minutes a day. Paul was urging the Colossians to keep growing in the truth. He also tells them what they will receive as they commit to growing in the truth. Verse 11 of Colossians chapter 1 says it like this from the Living Bible. It says, we are praying too that you will be filled with his mighty, glorious strength so that you can keep going no matter what happens. And listen to this. He says, always full of the joy of the Lord. This is a fourth result of growing in knowledge and spiritual strength. The word Paul uses in the Greek New Testament, remember the New Testament was originally written in the Greek language. The word Paul uses for strength is duna mu menoi. Duna mu menoi. Not an easy word to say at all, but it's an important word because it's a Greek present participle, which means this idea of strengthening is a continuous action. See, it's not like a one-time shot in the arm vaccine hoping it's going to work. No, no, no. It's a continuous action. Believers are continually being strengthened with all power throughout their Christian lives. We gain access to that power. How do we get that power? God's power comes to us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples that they would receive power after the Holy Spirit came upon them, from Acts 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8. The Apostle Paul told the Ephesian church that they would be strengthened with power through the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 3, 16. And then to the Romans, Paul said this. He said, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may, listen, overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 15, 13. Now, the Holy Spirit's role in our lives is one of empowering, of energizing, of guiding, of counseling, of giving wisdom. See, the Holy Spirit always points us to Jesus. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Spirit always points us to Jesus. Okay, he helps us to live more for Christ. The Holy Spirit's role is not to make sure you are weird, okay, or that you flop around on the ground, or words come out of your mouth that sound like gibberish. Whenever we've had a true, actual encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have more hope. We have more peace, more joy, more clarity, more reason, more sanity. It all comes in an overflowing capacity. Now, let's take a look at the second part of verse 11 from Colossians 1. It simply says this, so that you can keep going no matter what happens. Always full of joy in the Lord. See, not only do you get strength from the Holy Spirit as you gain knowledge of God, but you gain endurance to keep going no matter what happens. The New Living Translation says it like this, may you have all the endurance and patience you need so that you can keep going no matter what happens. Anybody need more endurance and patience during these times? Absolutely, we do. Paul tells the Colossians that there's another result of spiritual knowledge. He says, look, things are not easy and they won't be easy. He basically tells them, look, this is not heaven, but as you grow in the knowledge of God, our Savior, you will gain the strength and the endurance and the patience that you need to not just survive, but to thrive. You'll have all you need and more, he says. And the last part of verse 11 says, always full of the joy of the Lord. See, Paul does not have in his mind a type of endurance that's a teeth gritting, kind of suffering sadly. No, no, no. The strength provided by knowledge of God's word, that is his promises and purposes as revealed in the scriptures, gives the strength to endure trials, sufferings, and difficulties with joy. Now think about that. The strength provided by the Holy Spirit allows believers to endure difficulties with joy? The Greek here is metakaris, which means with joy. The Bible says by growing in the knowledge of our Lord, which means we understand more of his characteristics, more of who he is, more of his promises and purposes for our lives, we realize these trials are only temporary. 
and it can allow us to actually endure them with joy as Paul did himself. Acts 16, 25, for example. Now, I'll close with this. It was Paul's prayer for the Colossian church to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. He knew that only when believers are willingly controlled by that knowledge can they walk as Christians worthy of the Lord and pleasing Him. Okay, Paul knew that this knowledge was key to a fruitful Christian life filled with spiritual growth, strength, and joyful endurance of any trials.